Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from our practice cave and welcome to today's video where we are going to take a look at the top 10 best solos from the 2010s. Here we go. Okay, the following top 10 are all solos which were released between 2010 and 2019. And these are of course my favorite and the most inspiring solos from me from that time span, from that time area. Maybe it's different from your list, maybe it's different from your opinion or your taste, but this is my list, I can do whatever I want here. So I would say let's check out the list and let's see which one is number one. Please tell me what is your favorite solo from the 2010s. Write it down in the comments and write down in the comments which one was so your favorite solo from this list here. All right, here we go. On number 10, we have Megadeth with Poisonous Shadow. Kiko Lorero's first appearance in Megadeth on the record Dystopia was really really awesome especially on conquer or die and on the thread is real and on dystopia but uh, my favorite solo from that record is from poisonous shadows and i think it's one of the best mega solos ever the build-up is really awesome he starts with this really cool phrasing showing off why he is one of the greatest mega lead guitar players and then going into some rhythmical motifs some rhythmical ideas and then ending the solo with a big and epic finale so so my number 10 is Poisonous Shadows by Megadeth. Number 9 can be a little confusing for some people here because this solo is not from a record or not from any band or even not in a song. This solo is from a gear review. Yes, we are in the 2010s, welcome to the future. We now have YouTube, we now have big channels who make gear reviews and all that kind of stuff. And in one of those channels is uh, the guitar player, a really good friend of mine. And I'm talking about David Schneider from German Music Reviews. And the solo that he made for an Ibanez gear review was Mmm, so awesome. But not only is this a really, really awesome solo with some incredible shredding in there and some really cool motifs, some really cool diminished playing, the build up to the solo is one of the most epic build ups ever. The countdown, it's a really funny channel. The AO makes those jokes about the guitars and the gear. It's really, really awesome to watch. And here they are in space and they're counting off like a lift off. And then comes the legendary ignition. And then the solo starts. So number 9 is a solo from a good friend of mine, cheers to you, David Schneider, from his German music review channel. Check out this solo. Alright, number 8 is a Jeff Loomis solo. I say the most legendary solos from Jeff were in the 2000s during his time of Nevermore. And after the split of Nevermore in, I believe, 2012? Jeff had some really cool side projects like Conquering Dystopia and he appeared in a lot of guest solos. And one of these guest solos is one of my favorite Jeff Loomis solo ever on this top list, number 8. It's the song... I don't know how to pronounce it, it's a song from Ola England another great YouTube channel and the guitar player from The Haunted. Specific song that I cannot pronounce, Jeff Loomis has one of the most tasteful and most epic solos from him playing on a Stratocaster. When do you see Jeff Loomis is playing a Stratocaster? Not often, but he rips that Stratocaster. Really, really awesome. And this solo perfectly shows the not only the technical ability by Jeff, but also his taste, his really, really incredible note choices, his melodies, the rhythmical approaches, all that kind of stuff that makes solo playing, playing so awesome. So check out number eight, Blach 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 by Jeff Loomis.
Oh, hey, Ingwi, you are not in this list. I'm sorry. You are in the list from my 80s solo, which will hopefully come soon. So, my dear cat Ingwi, let's check out who is on number 7. So, on number 7, we have a song from Periphery. And one really, really awesome thing by the guys from Periphery is that not only they are incredible guitar players, but also they have a really good taste in a yeah, really good guitar players that they have as guest players, as guest artists on their record. And on their EP Clear, there is a guest solo from Nick Johnson. It was one of the first Nick Johnson solos I've ever heard and it really blew my mind back in the day when I heard it the first time. Not only is this a really, really awesome song, Parades of Ashes, and, but it's also one of the most tasteful and incredible solos from that area. And it perfectly fits in this janty death metal kind of style, but it's more kind of a party song anyways. But that interesting single coil sound, uh, Nick, uh, Nick used to play Stratocaster as well back in the day. And yes, his tasteful legato playing, his tasteful phrasing, the melodies, the bendings, everything. It's so awesome. Hmm? Oh, what would you say? What would you say, my little Ingvi? Oh, I love you. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, cat hair. <laughs> Man. So yeah, this solo definitely has to be in my top 10 list because it was really, really influential for me. So number seven is Nick Johnson, Parade of Ashes from Periphery. Number 6 is definitely one of the hardest solos I have ever covered and I'm talking about Aviator by Polyphia. But the solo is not by Tim Hansen, not by Scott, Scott LePage, that's the name of the other guitar player. Um, it is by Jason Richardson, oh man! And Jason Richardson has a big appearance on this channel, he is a really, really little influence for me and uh, he made one of the most epic technical introductions into a solo. The solo starts with the biggest bang possible. It's just a shred fest. We have alternate picking, we have crazy sweet picking, crazy arpeggios, tapping, all that kind of stuff. And then going into a little bit more kind of melody section and I really love this build up. Not starting slowly and building up more and more and more, but otherwise starting with a big and then going to a melody and developing it more and more and more. One of the coolest guitar moments from the last 10 years, Aviator by Pulifia featuring Jason Richardson. Number five, Martin Miller, Earthquake. <sighs> Martin Miller, my dear friend Martin Miller. Really awesome guy, great guitar player, great improviser, great composer, and even worth, great party dude. <laughs> Making party with this guy can be a lot of fun. But more fun is actually the solo, which from a song which is phenomenal. It's a fusion song, fusion chords, the playing from the Bastian Lanza, one of my favorite drummers all time, in the background really ripping it off. The keyboard solo, actually from that song, from the original player, I sadly forgot his name, I will write it down here, uh, he also wrote this song. It's one of the greatest solos of all time, but it's keyboard solo, but not a guitar solo. But the, but the guitar solo, on the other hand, by Martin is also really tasteful. It's really full of all that stuff that makes Martin playing so incredible. Crazy fusion lines, really good timing, 
and runs and leaks that are going to the point. Martin is telling a really good story here and Martin and Martin knows how to develop a good solo and not playing any boring stuff that doesn't lead anywhere and stuff like that. He is he knows where to start a run, where to end it and then to mash that up really perfectly. And yeah, he demonstrated this pretty really well in the solo. So, worth to check out. My number 4, Martin Miller Earthquake. Okay, number four is the solo from me because fuck you this is my channel i can do whatever i want yeah no this is a solo from my old prog metal band called eos which sadly we aren't active anymore because of your yeah, life and stuff oh goodbye Ingrid. now i'm talking about me he's leaving mm -hmm. i'm really proud of the record called memories of a dead man in general because it's a concept record in the solo i combined all kinds of melodies that appeared through all three songs starting off with the melody which was the intro for the song but this time in minor not in major all this kind of really cool stuff and then going into my more kind of fusion side playing some bebop lines and some rhythmical ideas going into some shredding and yeah it was all recorded in one take i think you can hear it i'm not that proud of the technique there it's a little bit sloppy here and there but it was recorded really old school without a click and all in one take which was not easy nowadays i wouldn't play something like this in one take no no but it was a lot of fun creating those songs it was a really good time with the band really nostalgic here and yep yeah, and this is one of my favorite solos from the 2010s i'm sorry but now you have to listen to it Going to the top three now it's getting serious here now it's getting really important because those three solos have a really deeply impact into my playing nowadays first off number three we have aquasis by obscura if you know me then you know that i have a deep relationship with aquasis i play with the current lead guitar player christian Minster and the ones who played on the uh, second or the third record from uh, obscura I play with him together in a band called Eternity's End. I'm a good friend with Raphael and all the guys from Obsidius who used to play in Obscura. And I'm a good friend of Tom Goldschläger who recorded this solo which is called Aquasis. And Obscura has a lot of great shredding, a lot of great solos. And But I was trying to limit myself for only one solo per artist and one solo per band. And I have to say the best solos from Raphael are not from Obscura, it's from Obsidius and the best solos from Christian are from this little city here. So I choose Aquasis because this is one of the most creative solos I've ever heard. The technique Tom is using here is so different from what you would actually do. It's a lot of it's a lot of hybrid picking, it's a lot of tapping, a lot of really cool, interesting sweepings. The build-up is great, the melody choice is great, the phrasing is really, really interesting. And it's so iconic. I really loved it. It deeply influenced my playing to go one step beyond, one step further, to be a little bit more creative in what I'm doing and what I'm playing. And it was the first song that introduced me in one of my now current favorite genres, which is technical death metal. So thank you Obscura and thank you Don Gelschläger for this. You son of a bitch.
right, number two. It's definitely need to be a John Petrucci solo because John Petrucci has to be in this list somewhere. And it was really hard to pick out only one solo because, I mean, you all know that I'm one of the biggest John Petrucci fans out there. Um, but I have chosen Breaking All Illusions from a dramatic turn of events. Because this solo perfectly shows not only the technical abilities from Petrucci, but also his feeling. That he knows how to use dynamics, how to use phrasing, how to write really good melodies, how to leave space. What is one of the most rarest techniques that guitar players are using? Is it finger picking or is it economy picking or sweep, alternate, tapped, arpeggios and augmented, whatnot? No, it's leaving space in your solo. Just find me a solo where you have like one bar space between all of this. It has great impact, a great effect for your solo, but a lot of guitar players are not really trying it or are afraid of um, yeah, leaving space and then on the other hand overplaying everything, but not Petrucci. He knows how to build up a good solo, how to create great melodies and turn it into one of the most legendary solos from him. So breaking all illusions by a dramatic turn of events. Okay, coming to number one of my favorite solos from the 2010s, and this one is from Guthrie Govan, Regret number nine from the Stephen Wilson solo record called Hand Cannot Erase. Oh man, I love this solo. This had such an impact on me. It always, this solo for me is the purest form of positive energy ever. When I'm listening to the solo, I cannot feel sad or bad or whatnot. I feel the energy, I feel the flow and I just mm, have to put a big smile on my face because the chord progression underneath it, the melody, all the stuff that I've mentioned in all those other solos here, build up melodies, phrasing, timing, a technique, all that kind of stuff is here on a certain perfection. And it's again here played in one fucking take. One fucking take. You don't play this in one fucking take, but Guthrie does. And this is the reason why Guthrie is one of the greatest guitar players out there. And also why this is my favorite solos from the 2010s and probably one of my favorite solos ever. So go check out Regret number 9. So, so, so much for this list before I end this video with Regret number 9. I hope my video will not get any claims from YouTube by using all those solos. Well, let's see. Um, I hope you liked this little video. I hope I'm going to see my next video. Cheers so far and stay progress. Bye. You know, searching for answers and searching for meaning, as we all do. You know, everyone does it. Yeah.